Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. And it's very hard to tell exactly how this show's going to look. I feel like a basket weaver here. Um, basically, the very nice high-def camera was used to record the last passing time show. And uh, Christelle promptly left the court of the club, so we had to order a new cord. So the news goes on even when the camera is dead, and that's what's happening today as this camera's like, it's like blinding. I feel like I'm under the judgment or like the aliens or something are coming from me. This is... Hello, listeners. All right, enough insanity. We do have serious news to get to. PrisonPlanet.com, Kurt Nemo, rampaging jihad has killed dozens in Kenya. I, I said it before openly. I was not always against some kind of intervention in Iraq. Because while it, uh, to some degree is true that Al-Qaeda did not have a strong presence in Iraq, I have said openly that one of the ways that I disagree with both Alex Jones and Ron Paul, who I very much wish was President of the United States, there was Al-Qaeda in Iraq uh, prior to us getting there. Saddam Hussein gave Musab al zakawi a safe haven there. So we know that there was some there. Should we have done what we did? No. Did we make it better? No. Did George Bush make it worse? Yes, he did. Has Obama made it even worse still? Up until his withdrawal, you could argue, yes, he at least has done it badly. So here's where we are now with this. Terrorists from Al-Shabaab, the Somali Al-Qaeda affiliate, attacked the small Kenyan town of Mestani near the tourist center of Lamu on Sunday and killed 48 people, according to officials in the East African nation. So now the entire problem that we have, here's what happened. We created such a mess with our intervention in Syria, and especially Libya, that the funds that we gave the government there to fight, to stay in power, those weapons are now being used by Islamists, who are fascists and terrorists, against the free people of Libya, against the free people in Iraq. Go to the mediaspeaks.com uh, report. Look at look at what D Lake has reported on what's going on there in Iraq. They're doing the same thing we did in Vietnam. We all the only thing America did was slow down what was the inevitable takeover in uh, the Vietnam instance, and now with the terrorists here, and now we're looking at it in Africa, and they all tie together. The whole thing ties together. Because these are these same weapons that were stolen that we had sent there that we had no business being involved in. Men watching the World Cup at a hotel system, systematically executed while women were forced to watch. Oh, the religion of peace has beheaded another person. According to Kenya Police Commander David Kim Mieo, hat tip, uh, savage. The terrorists said the execution was in a response to the activity of Kenyan troops in Somalia. So there's already been justification for killing people. Kenya sent troops there to counter Al-Shabaab kidnappings and attacks. Like Nairobi's Westgate Mall attack last year, the Meptoni attackers reportedly gave the life or death religious requests. And this is a problem that a lot of people have with Islam. I've said a hundred times, I don't have a problem with whatever religion you are. The trouble is, every, not every time, usually, Islamic nations tend to lose power to the crazy side of the religion. The fascists, the terrorists, always manage to end up taking over the group of Islamists who were not nutcases. And... It looks like it's happened again. That's, that's, I haven't ever heard it said before. You know what? That's the great thing about uh, on the no, uh, no teleprompter. It's sometimes really good ideas get to you. How many of you agree with this? The problem with Islam is that the mostly good people have a really high average 
of losing control to the really bad people in Islam. Uh, that might be one of the most insightful things I've ever come up with on the spot. So tell other people. It's true. I swear to God, it's the most true thing I've ever said. It is said that the Shakir Waibib described as an enforcer of the Islamic State of Iraq and Asham has executed people in his Quranic quiz in Iraq. ISIS has captured large areas of northern Iraq this week and posted videos of mass executions. Yeah, why don't we want them in charge? Basically, they come to your door, and if you can't answer questions uh, that are basic to the Quran, then they'll kill you because they don't want you to have any freedom of religion whatsoever. Christian Kenyans were specifically targeted for execution, always. They came to our house at around 8 p.m., and asked us in Swahili whether we were Muslims. My husband told them they were Christians, and they shot him in the head, and Jeff, a resident, told CBC News. So these, let's not lose fact that these are the people that our government has been supporting, or these are the people that we have been sending arms to in an area where they could be acquired and stolen by these wonderful practitioners of peace. The terrorist group joined Al-Qaeda in 2012, and so it's not like we didn't know about it. It imposed an austere form of Sharia law on rural regions. You know what? Take your Sharia law and shove it up your ass. That's what most of us think. And unfortunately, these are the people that are creating a lot of the division that we're seeing all over the world and in their own religion, in Islam. So that's just one more update on an already dreadful situation. Friends, uh, I wanted to get to this. Russia is doing it. Russia is actually abandoning the dollar. Michael Snyder, the economic collapse. There's one part of this that I thought was absolutely hilarious, and I said it on this show repeatedly. Just because I know that what my government does is wrong, it does not mean is that I can't recognize absolute idiocy in other nations. There's this belief that, uh, for instance, oh, but Vladimir Putin is wonderful. Just because Vladimir Putin is a thorn in Obama's side, and Obama is, in fact, a terrible president, that does not mean that Vladimir Putin is a great man. Vladimir Putin is a piece of garbage. Um, the Russians are actually making a move against the petrodollar. It appears that they are quite serious about the de-dollarization strategy. The largest mutual gas producer on the planet, Gazprom, has signed agreements with some of the biggest customers to switch payments from natural gas from U.S. dollars to the euro. Why not the ruble, Putin? Maybe because you're not as big and as bad as you thought you were. The reason that this is so funny, for those of you that might not be news savvy, thank you, is because Vladimir Putin has done everything he can to create problems for the idiots in the Ukraine that wanted to join the Eurozone. And why do I say that? Because Ukrainians... If you can't agree that you don't want to be part of the Eurozone and you don't want to be part of Russia, you simply want to be your own country. If you can't do that, then I'm sorry, I don't feel bad for you. Sorry, friends, I'm dying. But to go to the Euro to defeat the dollar when the entire problem was caused by the country wanting to use their free vote to become part of the Eurozone only underscores how painfully pathetic Russia really is. We're going to use the Euro to defeat the dollar. <laughs> is there even word for it? Ah, how pathetic is that? Um, I I don't even know what to say. But one, one thing is for absolute sure, though, and this is beyond question. This pull from the dollar could be very bad for the U.S., but it could also be very good because maybe it will make us become a little more America-minded and a little bit less NWO-minded. 
I hope we have to drill a oil, and I hope we have to shut down our nuclear power plants. And I, you know, I would love to see all of that happen because America had its best days when America relied on America, with very few exceptions. Guys, this is uh, Elizabeth Rentor, Infowars.com. I, mean, um, I do a lot of Fukushima news on here, and today is not going to be an exception. Radiation in tuna triples after Fukushima, a new study says. Notable effects of the Fukushima disaster in tuna caught off the coast of Oregon. Thank God at last, uh, Christelle has been listening to me. She was making uh, macro cheese yesterday. And of course, that comes out of a box anyway. So anything in a box is half toxic before you start. And she said, do you want tuna in yours? No. I would not like to play Russian roulette, and I would not like to inject myself with heroin used for needles of strangers. It's Russian roulette. I was joking with her. The fish do not jump out of the water and say, I have cesium. I have cesium. Strontium. Uranium. Oh, look at that cesium die today. It doesn't happen. Um, this is dated in June. When did they get the fish? When did they test them? When did they get the results? We're talking about fish that had to have been caught a considerable amount of time in order to come out on June 9th, 2014, it's currently 6:17. To come out, what, a week ago, it must have been fish that were caught quite some time ago. So, regardless of when that fish was canned, unless it was prior to March 11th of 2011, you may not want to eat it. And I was so happy with her, because she didn't. And after hearing this, she, in turn, is going to be happy that she didn't. You're right, it says, to be concerned about the effects of radiation from Fukushima nuclear disaster of 2011 and beyond. The power station in Japan failed miserably following an earthquake, sending radioactive waste into the ocean at amounts still not fully understood. In other words, we're not really sure what you're reading. Recently, a study from researchers with Oregon State University had affirmed the spill to have affected sea life in albacore tuna in particular. Published in the Journal of Environmental Science and Technology, the research led by Delvin Neville of the Department of Nuclear Engineering and Radiation Health Physics at the University says there are notable effects of the Fukushima disaster being felt by tuna caught off the coast of Oregon. Well, Sam, if that was going on, somebody would say something about it. You mean somebody like uh, Delvin Neville with all the credentials that I just gave you? That kind of somebody? Because he's talking. You can't say there is absolutely zero risk because any radiation is assumed to carry at least some small risk, said Neville, but he says the amounts aren't enough to pose a risk to consumers. Neville and his team of researchers examined tuna caught off the Oregon coast between 2008 and 2012. In other words, they had tuna before Fukushima had occurred and up to a year following. At the most extreme rate level, the radioactive isotopes tripled from the pre- to post-Fukushima samples. Neville says this isn't enough to be harmful. Now, let me pause. You're going to say, see, even the doctor you just quoted said it wasn't enough to be harmful. Now, this doctor is saying that they have found radiation samples in tuna. Other studies, you went we want uh, sources, uh, Chris Busby, Helen Colercott, Lauren Murray, Fukushima Diary. Um, the levels of, if you're finding levels in one isotope that isn't harmful, there's probably levels of other isotopes that are harmful that were not tested in at that study. When you read other studies with this, then you can see clearly that it is a threat to human health. So you have to compare more than one study. That's why I do these things to let you know how these, these terms work here. Not everyone's convinced, by the way, that it's not harmful. Researchers with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, there's a whole bunch of sources, and GMR Research Center for Marine Geosciences says that the worst is yet to come, and that the most highly radioactive water hasn't reached the shores yet. Some estimates say the water could be ten times stronger when it reaches the U.S. shores than it was when it left Japan. Others say it's diffusing. One thing is for certain, the radioactive contamination is still traveling in the ocean currents and the long-term effects have yet to be seen. Um, let's not forget the work that Mikhail Phelan did for another source for all of you people that don't believe it. Let's not forget what's happened there. Um, 
we have animals washing up on the shore on a bunch of different coasts with all kinds of what appear to be radioactive burns. It's happened to seals, so it's, it's real. Don't need to see food. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I want to remind you that you want to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him, Mike underscore, or at Facebook.com, Mike McLaughlin or Archangel underscore. Look him up because he writes some of the absolute best fiction you're ever going to read. He writes poetry, lots of really interesting things. And his vampire book is like this close to being done. So the more you support him, the more work he can do upon it. While you're reading, go to uh, Kindle Publishing, Amazon.com, look up A Sleep Unknowing, Risen, or The Lucky Leprechaun. All three of them are written by me, and I'm selling them on Amazon. Uh, one of them is a persuasive essay on Christianity, and the other two are horror stories. All right, guys, watchdog.org. Three cops in New York's infamous anal cavity search case still on the job. I like to think that my job would have fired me for something like this. It's one of the most shocking and infamous cases to ever come out of New Mexico. A man falsely suspected of carrying drugs forced to undergo multiple anal cavity searches. No, that's not a, 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 a breach of the Fourth Amendment. No, just you know, a field shoot. Now, a year and a half after the incident and six months after a settlement of $1.6 million in local taxpayer money was announced, New Mexico Watchdog has learned at least three uh, police officers involved in the case are still on the job, while the status of three others remains secret. That's insane. Deeming Police Chief Brandon Jijaki told New Mex Mexico Watchdog all three officers in his department were still listed as defendants in a subsequent lawsuit and are on active duty. Gigante didn't say why or reveal if the officers were disciplined. This is a personal matter. Some people would argue that your anal cavity should be left as a personal matter. So I don't think that holds very much water here. <laughs> Three members of the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office were also listed in the lawsuit, but county officials refused to answer any questions about their status in the aftermath of the case involving Northward NM. New resident, David Eckert. A settlement was announced in January in which the 64-year-old Eckert will get $950,000 from the city of Deeming and $650,000 from Hidalgo County. A total of $1.6 million for which taxpayers in the two communities are responsible, but of course, let's keep paying the cops that caused this. According to the lawsuit, in early 2013, Eckert was pulled over by Deming police allegedly for not coming to a full stop at a stop sign in a Walmart parking lot in Deming. Hillary County Sheriff's Office has also arrived at the scene. I don't believe that a private property has exactly the same repercussions as a stop sign on the street, by the way. I know this because my parents uh, were run into once when I was a kid in a parking lot, and the insurance company didn't touch it because it was a private property. Authorities suspected Eckert was carrying drugs inside his anal cavity, and over a 14-hour period subjected him to two rounds of x-rays, three enemas, and took him to the hospital in another county where Eckert was forced to undergo a colonoscopy. None of those, of course, are a breach of his Fourth Amendment rights in any way. He can look up your ass anytime they want to. There's nothing wrong with it. We can give you radiation with x-rays without knowing your past and how many x-rays you've already had. Of course, too many could be bad, but we just know it won't hurt you. You should always use three animals uh, within a 14-hour period. Of course, the box says that to do so, you could harm yourself there, but please know better. Just like they do about the colonoscopy that they can force you to go through. They don't know whether or not you have hemorrhoids or something. They don't know whether or not you've got some kind of a condition that could make this bad and all. They just know they're going to force you on a doctor to put a tube up your rectum and nothing's going to happen. Bastards. No drugs were found. Eckert also received a bill for six grand for the colonoscopy. They tried to charge him for it. So basically the piggy swine that did it are still on the force, which if it makes you sick, then that's why I do these reports. Contact them and let them know it. Showbiz411.com, guys, this is might be the best thing I've ever heard in my life. There's not even words for how happy I am about this. Charts! 
Rob is all but dead, as Led Zeppelin's 40-year-old album sells 60,000 copies. Friends, I wish it were more true. Unfortunately, I DJ for a living, and I know that hip-hop garbage is all anybody ever wants to listen to, because we live in a stupid nation full of stupid evil, <sighs> with no sense of uh, musical taste at all. But... I'd like to think it's true. I just think they're out of touch. I think that the uh, the older generations bought the CDs and uh, the younger generation is just YouTubing it or pirating it. So it makes Led Zeppelin look like they're selling more. Unfortunately, I think these idiots with no talent like Schoolboy Q are doing quite well. But I would like to hope and pray, in fact, that this is true. So that's why I'm covering it. What happened to crap, uh, rap? It's off the charts with two minor exceptions, a sluggish new album from 50 Cent and an oldish album at the bottom of the charts by Schoolboy Q. What's in? Unfortunately, pop and R&B. White kids, black kids who sound white. In other words, hip-hop. It is rap. So this is one of the stupidest stories I've ever heard. Hip-hop is just really weak rap. Hip-hop is to rap what emo is to punk. It's the really rotten, crappy side of it. So, I mean, whatever. It claims that rap is dying, so I definitely wanted to report on it. But let's face it. If you've got Jay-Z on the charts, and you've got Miranda Lambert. I, I'm sorry, Miranda Lambert's just as bad. So, yeah, there's your brief entertainment update. Supposedly rap is dying uh, from, from, it, from their lips to God's ears. Friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee of the day from eganews.org, E-A-G News, I guess. Chicago Public Schools prom slogan is, this is our story. Why is that funny? R. A-R-E. This is great. Paul Robertson High School, class of 2014. This is A-R-E story. Uh, Friday, May 30th, 2014, and there's like a pretty, pretty little invite. <laughs> uh, for those of you that like hip hop, it's supposed to be spelled O U R. So here's the dummy of the day. It's hard to deny just how poorly Chicago's public schools are performing when it hits you in the face. Such is the case of Paul Roberts, Robertson. Robeson. I've got this glare from the light. I sound like I went to Chicago public school. Paul Robeson High School's 2014 prom scene, this is our A.R.E. story. I went to Canton Public Schools. They're not much better. This, that image came from veteran investigative reporter Chuck Goldie, who posted this image on his Facebook page. Some people might enjoy mocking the irony of the gross misuse of vocabulary, but unless the organizers of the prom festivities planned the wording this way as a joke, there's nothing funny about the situation. Well, if they found it as a joke, they would have quoted the R, so that's not what they meant. Paul Roberson in the high school is uh, Paul Roberson High School is located in the Englewood neighborhood on Chicago's South Side, one of the poorest and most dangerous neighborhoods in the city. Well, if the thugs wouldn't make it so dangerous, it wouldn't be so poor. Let's face it, that's why they run the good people out of town and then wanna to wanna to know why there's no good people there anymore. The high school is also part of the failing Chicago Public Schools or CPS system. Four out of five, ten CPS freshmen do not graduate. Well, if they would put the guns down and quit attacking each other, that might not be the case. If they do graduate, 91% have to re have to take remediation courses in college because they don't know the basics. Well, that's I had to take, uh, I had to retake uh, the algebra stuff because you don't use that every day, so it doesn't stay with you because it's only something they give you to make you uh, pay a lot of money anyway. It doesn't really do you any good. Students in these schools whose family can't afford an alternative are trapped in classrooms that are for the most part unequipping them to succeed. It sounds to me that the teachers are not so much the problem here as the fact that the crime isn't punished properly as it should be. Why is that? Because they're locking up too many potheads. That's why. Because they're locking up a lot of people that aren't causing any damage, and they're not locking up the people that are. So, friends, there you go. Just another story on how Ron Paul was completely right about the educational system. And Obama, who defeated Ron Paul, has been wrong, and now we have this is our A-R-E. Friends, you're listening to the correcties. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. If you'd like to donate to the show, go to The Media Speaks. Go to... 
thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. And all money you give to me goes to a better show. Then go to themediaspeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We're posting all the time. Thanks for watching, friends. Your viewership and you hitting subscribe is what makes this show better. Good night, friends. God bless.